Hi everyone. After I uploaded my last video using Magic's Music Maker where I demonstrated how to use the modulation wheel on an external MIDI keyboard, I had a question asked by one of my viewers who asked, is it possible to add these modulation effects or pitch bend effects afterwards or do they need an external MIDI keyboard in order to apply the effects? Well, in this video, I'm hoping to demonstrate that you don't actually need an external MIDI keyboard and the effects can be applied uh, afterwards. When you start Magix, it's the usual default screens. I'm using the very latest version of Magix, which is 2021 Premium. Um, it puts the usual screen up like this and Lately, it's decided to put the, the Piano VST, which has always been there anyway, and it's now applied the Beatbox track here on track two. The bottom of the screen always also looks slightly different, but if you're used to seeing the, the keyboard, just click on the keyboard tab at the bottom of the screen here, and it looks very similar to all Magix does. We can get rid of these tracks. If you right click over a track, and select clean track it will take the item off that track at the moment it's left the piano vst in place here which means i can if i use the mouse button play notes on the keyboard here as always but i'm not going to use that so i can right click over that track and clean that track as well so now we've got nothing in other words when i play anything here it's not going to play anything because there's no instrument selected so you get no, no sound. The instrument I'm going to use is in my repertoire. I've got the uh, saxophonia here, which I'm going to insert into the project. Like so. As with all the instruments, they usually put a bit of a, a default object in place like this one has on track one now. We can highlight that and just delete it. We don't need that. And I can now play the saxophone either using the instrument keyboard or the virtual on-screen keyboard. But what I'm going to do is just play a single note, middle C here, C3. Start the recording and press the button. And let it go. Stop the recording. We now have a MIDI object on track one here and we can edit this MIDI object. You can either double click the object which will take you into the MIDI editor like so or you can right click and select uh, the MIDI editor. Same thing or you can just select the object and press the Y on the keyboard. It does all the same thing. What I'll do, I'll just stretch this mini editor out to the edge of the screen and we'll stretch it down a bit. Okay, so here's the note I've just played on the keyboard. As you can see, we've got a space between the front and the start of the note. That was the delay in me starting the record and pressing the key on the keyboard here. We can pick that note up and take it to the start of the bar. Now, usually when you, oops, let me just correct this. Usually when you open the MIDI editor, it displays the velocity bar here at the bottom of the screen. What this is at the end here, this is the note, if we select this uh, select tool, this is the note that I've just played. If I click away and don't highlight it, if I click on this velocity bar, it will select that note. That is how hard the note is being played. So if we just tap the space bar, sounds quite harsh. We can reduce this velocity down and play it again. And it's a softer note. 
so we'll raise that one back up. What I'm going to do is turn this into a chord. I'm going to select this object, hold the control key down on the keyboard, and I'm going to take that up to the E. There. I'm also going to copy that one down to the G to give me a chord. Like so. Now, if we play that, tap the spacebar. Tap the spacebar to stop again. That plays a chord. However, what some people aren't aware of is that each of these notes can have a velocity of their own. But because they've all got the same velocity, you can't see it on this control here. If we zoom in slightly, using the positive button here, we can now see that these are tiny sections. If we move this bottom note to the right, let's say uh, a couple of beats, and move the C over one beat, you can now see that we've got three velocity settings here. The one on the left is controlling the E, the one in the middle is controlling the C, and the one on the right is controlling the G. And you can actually change the velocity of each of those notes. So if you wanted to emphasize, say, the C, you can leave the C as high as it is, and you can drop the E down slightly so that you hear more of the C. You can drop the G down slightly. And you can play those again. Tap the spacebar. Press stop key. If you wanted to emphasize the E, then you can increase that one. And you can drop the C down. And you can take the G slightly higher. Play those. And when you've got the, the sound that you like, you can then push these notes back together. And now they're all in line. If you now notice on the velocity bar here, there are two tiny little black lines, one there and one there. They denote the fact that there are three notes being played at exactly the same time, but at three different velocities. So you can at least change them. What I'm going to do is just pull these back out. And I'm going to set all the velocities to roughly the same. And then I'll put them back. And we'll play that. And we'll stop it. Right then. Here's the effects I wanted to try to demonstrate. As I said before, normally the default is for the velocity, but if we drop this menu down here, we have pitch bend here. For now, we're going to use the pitch bend. And what I'll do, I'll use the draw tool. And if you notice here, across the center of the screen here is a gray line, very fine gray line. That is actually the zero point of the pitch bend. And if we draw from there, we can draw up and down and up and down and up and down and up. And when you let it go, it gives you this graph which shows you the pitch of notes. So let's just play that now and you will now hear the pitch bend on that instrument. You will also see this wheel here on the keyboard display the amount of pitch bend being applied. Let's play it. Okay, now you may think, oh, well that's it, is that all I can do? No, it isn't. You can actually use the selection tool and you can move these pitch bends up. Not only that, but if you zoom in really tight, you can see just how many sections of this are available and you can pick up tiny little pieces of this bend and move them to where you want. Let's zoom out again, and we'll play it again. Mm -hmm. 
Stop that. And you can do that as much as you like and you can adjust all of these peaks. You can even take the positive peaks down to negative and play with them as much as you like. Tiny little pieces. If you want to start again, just click somewhere into this area, press Control A, which selects everything, and hit the delete key and delete it. And you can draw another line if you wanted to. You can even start with a minus half tone and go up, up, and get the drawing tool in. Helps. And we'll draw a line like this. And you can play that. Stop that. Press Control A and delete. There's also a line tool here, this bottom one. And you can draw lines. So you can actually start a line here and draw a direct line to wherever you like. And again, it will show you a graph. So let's try playing that. So as you can see, you can actually draw lines, draw squiggly lines, just select everything and delete, and you can change the pitch. Another feature is the modulation. If we click on this menu again and select the mod wheel, this will now adjust this modulation wheel here on the instrument. This is the instrument, as you can see. Let's just highlight the MIDI editor again. So now we can actually change the modulation. And once again, we can draw lines. And if you listen to the, you'll notice that the modulation wheel will display the change in modulation. This will start off with almost no modulation to virtually maximum. And you will see this wheel start at the bottom and work its way to the top. So let's just tap space while I'm playing that. As you can tell, the modulation changes. Once again, let's select everything and delete it. And there's nothing stopping you from drawing lines for minimum modulation to maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum, and so on. And it doesn't matter about the modulation because if you notice, there's no gray line in the center because there's no real zero for it. You're not changing the pitch, you're just modulating the, the tone. Tap space more. <clears throat> and as you can tell, the modulation changes in correspondence to this graph. And once again, you can select the, the uh, select tool and there's nothing stopping you from changing all of these again to however you want them. And you can produce whatever sound you like. I'm just gonna press Control A and delete. And I think that about gives you some idea of how you can change the sound of an instrument using the MIDI editor. Some instruments do allow some of these others, these other effects, but not all of them. And not all of them allow the um, mod wheel or the pitch bend either. You have to experiment with each instrument and each of your MIDI objects to see um, which ones allow which features. We can just close this MIDI editor. We now have an object up here where you can see that it now has all of the notes at the start. That's because I moved the original note from a couple of bars in to the start of the bar um, and the start of the beat. You can actually drag the end of this now back if you want to to almost the end of that note. We've finished with the Saxophone here now, we can close that. Just click somewhere in the window and just play that. When it feels like playing it. <laughs> well, I hope that's given you some idea of how to play about with some of the features in the MIDI editor. As I said before, it is uh, more powerful than some people realise. 
the latest version of Music Maker comes with this Song Maker AI, which I've had a play with, and I must say I've had some interesting results. The Beatbox Pro, I've never really done anything with it, and the only reason why I can't display it now is because I deleted the track that had it in it. But you can always have a play with that. Anyway, that concludes this uh, tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Do leave some comments and please experiment for yourself. Thanks for watching.